27, which formula shows the will produce sodium ethanoate upon hydrolysis? So they are all esters. Sodium ethanoate will have this structure. Okay, because ETH means two carbons, ethanoate, sodium. Now, we look at all the ester group and then we cleave them up under hydrolysis. The one that contains the CO double bonds will be the acid group. Right, so all this we consider the left side. And then we look at the possibilities. We want uh, the acid or the salt to have two carbons. Right, that's why we will need D to form sodium ethanoate. Twenty-eight compound Y is oxidized, and then the resulting product gives orange PPT with two four DMPH. That means it could be aldehyde or ketone, but it doesn't react with Tolens reagent, so it eliminates aldehydes. Okay, we are down with ketones. So of all the four, butanol, butyl one all will. When oxidized, will either give us butanol, the aldehyde, or butanoic acid. So no ketones here. Butyl two all will give us the ketone. So it's possible. Butanol, as mentioned, gives us butanoic acid. Two methyl proper two all. I draw the structure here. This is actually a tertiary alcohol. So it will not be oxidized. So oxidized and to form a ketone will be B. Aldehydes and ketones, which one will react with sodium boron hydride? Both of them can be reduced with sodium boron hydride. Ketones will become secondary alcohol. Aldehydes will become primary alcohol. And react with phalanx. Between the two, only aldehyde reacts with phalanx. So this is a more straightforward question. Aldehydes will react with both sodium boron hydride and phalanx phalanx reagent. Thirty. Primary alcohol CH two O H. Which reagent reacts with the primary alcohol to give organic product with the with still the same oxygen atoms? That means before and after reactions, the oxygen still remains there. So, for aluminium oxide, what we undergo will be uh, dehydration. When they react, we will actually get this OH gone, and then we have a H removed from another carbon. We actually will get this. Alkene, so it has lost one oxygen, so that's out. If we react with ethanol under suitable conditions, or react with ethanol acid under suitable conditions, it will be esters, and then we will get one additional oxygen being attached to the molecule. So esterification is also out. HBr. Under suitable conditions, the Br will replace the OH. Okay, and then we lose one oxygen also. So that's not what we want. Sodium and the alcohol, we will get this structure. The hydrogen is gone as hydrogen gas. Right, but the oxygen still remains there, so there's no change if for the number of oxygen. So D is the answer. Thirty one, which is correct in terms of the theory of acids and bases, the Bronsted Lowry. Water can act as either an acid or a base. Well, water can donate a proton, and then that's acting as an acid. Water can also 
accept a proton and that's that's when it becomes base so it can act as either one this is true sulfuric acid does not behave like an acid when dissolved in ethanol when sulfuric acid or corn sulfuric acid reacts with ethanol it actually loses a proton and then the ethanol actually gains a proton so by donating a proton it does behave as an acid so this statement is not correct ammonium reacts as acts as a base when dissolved in liquid ammonia well ammonium is NH4 plus if anything it will be able to it must lose its H plus and when it does that it's actually behaving like an acid so it's not behaving like a base so only one is correct metallic copper what is the structure like we have closely packed positive copper ions and then a sea of delocalized electrons okay it's just electrostatic attraction not ionic bonds not between positive and negative ions so there's no ionic bonds here so statement one two correct Zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid. Which statements are correct? They are, we have to compare the ratio of the moles. So we convert the mass to number of moles, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 moles of zinc. And then by ratio, we will also have 0 0.05 moles of zinc chloride. One is to one. So statement one is correct. The mass is now different. It's now 0 0.1 mole of zinc. How much acid will it need to react with? 0 0.1 mole will need to react with 0 0.2 moles of acid. Okay. So this is wrong. This is only 0 0.1. We need 0 0.2 moles based on the equation on top. So this is not correct. Statement 3 must be wrong then. But we have to check 0 0.2 moles now and hydrogen gas 0 0.2 moles will give us 0 0.2 moles of hydrogen gas under room conditions 1 mole will be 24 dm cube moles per dm cube Right, that will give us 4.8 dm cube of hydrogen gas. So statement 3 as expected is wrong because statement 2 is already wrong. Which statement is correct for aluminium chloride? to dissolve in water to give acidic solution this is correct okay. because of the high charge density of aluminium it actually weakens one of the OH bonds within the water and then the H plus is released so we have five waters still there one of them losing is H hydrogen and then it comes out as a proton and donated to another water molecule so this is correct magnesium chloride for that the same reason will also be correct okay you replace this with magnesium it will also give a acidic solution it's just that magnesium mg2 plus the charge density is not as high so it will not be as acidic as the aluminium version Sodium chloride dissolve to give an alkaline solution. No, sodium chloride will dissolve and then it will be neutral. It's a neutral salt. So one and two statements. Which oxide reacts with water to give a pH of 10 or higher? Well, all these oxides will give the 
hydroxides which are very soluble in water and they will turn the water alkaline so all three will give a pH of 10 and higher